In the spring of 2013, a class of students learning about literacy and technology at Oregon State University became curious about the role cell phones, and especially smartphones, play in our everyday lives. We knew that 96% of undergraduates and graduate students own a cell phone. 56% of American adults own a smartphone. And 31% of smartphone owners use their phone as their primary method of accessing the web. But we wanted to know more about how people feel about their cell phones and about how people believe cell phones affect their lives. How much power do they have? How much power do we grant them? What do we think about how cell phones have changed our relationships to school, work, the world, ourselves, and each other? So we started asking questions. Questions like, does your smartphone help you to say I love you? Does your smartphone give you more or less control over your social life? Does your smartphone make you any smarter? In all, we sat down with over 65 people, including many students, and asked over 20 questions about their relationships with their cell phones, and recorded their responses with our own cell phones. These are some of their comments. Um, 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 uh, um, um. Oh my god. <clears throat> um, that's more difficult to answer. Um, like <sighs> Sure, yeah. It, it can convey that kind of a message. I think that that has to do with the intention of, of the sender, right? So if you're wanting to say, I love you, and they convey that message through a cell phone, I think it should mean as much. I mean, I guess I say I love you on my phone a lot, either via text or in person, but I don't know if it really helps me communicate it more honestly or fully or genuinely. I'm in a long distance relationship. So there's FaceTime and text messaging and the opportunity to maybe talk, uh, well, obviously the opportunity to talk at all, but also the opportunity to uh, send messages and emails when the time change is such that we probably shouldn't be talking to each other vocally because one of us is asleep or one of us is awake. So it, it sort of increases the sphere of time that we can keep in touch with each other. I'm kind of sad to say, but yes, my cell phone does help me say I love you. I mostly use my phone to communicate with my friends or other people, like collaborating on group projects or something. I check email. I check the time all the time. I take photos, I keep my files here, I use the Dropbox app. I play games on it, I text on it, I have all kinds of apps that teach me things and make me smarter, like Word of the Day app and Crossword app and Poetry Daily app. I call my family, I text mostly, I actually pay for minutes, so I text a lot. Lots of text messaging, occasional phone calling. Um, I spend a lot of time looking up recipes. I Instagram. Um, I text with my mom and my sister. Uh, I mean, it's just uh, maps. I, it tells me where to go. Social networks, Facebook, mm -hmm. LinkedIn, uh, check up on email, um, just a lot of different things. Searching Reddit, Google Reader, um, playing just a few games like Sudoku. I 
have Twitter on my phone, which I really love, and I use my Twitter as mostly a news feed. Texts and calls, of course, uh, and I check Facebook and Twitter. Like for texting and calling, but then also for browsing the internet, and it's also kind of like my iPod now, I have all my music on there. I have a couple of apps, not very many, it probably should have more to be hit. I not only use it for like, you know, just browsing the web, but I also use it for, you know, communicating with people. Well, it keeps, it gives you information at your fingertips, so, you know, if I want to know what the weather is outside right now without um, having to check the TV, then I can just stir my computer and the internet, I can just check my phone. It's more like an alternate reality, it's not really like... Um, I don't know how to, how to describe it. It's uh, basically, I guess, I don't know. What, what's the question again? Sorry. Uh, it depends what you mean by reality. I mean, like real world events. I mean, they might know something's happening somewhere, but really you can feel kind of dissociated with reality just because you're overstimulated with information. Well, because you just you, you get sucked into this phone that has new different gadgets that are different than any other thing, supposedly. So. I see people doing a lot of things these days like riding the bus and stuff where they don't make eye contact and everything's all about the the smartphone and sort of their heads locked into that virtual world and all around life is happening. I guess that's a huge problem for me and for my friends also because we used to, when we was at for dinner, we used to chat a lot but now everybody's looking and yourself also. I actually have strong feelings about that. I think that the, the, all this smart technology in some ways is has made people a lot less uh, empathetic and, and uh, feeling oriented. Where normally you'd be sitting and thinking about where you are and observing things and processing them, I think that the tendency is to kind of look down and look at a screen and control what that screen is showing. Nope. No. Actually, yeah. I can, I can encounter a couple of times. Uh, one was when I was calling my brother, who was currently uh, in Washington. And I remember talking to him and just sort of having it cut out. And then having that kind of, well, I am officially separated from all of humanity. This is great. Uh, it's, I don't know. I mean, it's not really, a, it's not an isolating tool. It's a, it's a, it helps you connect to people. I mean, why would it isolate you? It causes people to contact each other less on a personal level because mm -hmm. they automatically assume through social media, which most people have on their smartphones, you know what's going on in their lives even though they haven't contacted you. Mm. I've had a few close calls. I can't think of a specific time, but probably. No. <laughs> Walk and talk, I'm okay, but walking and text messaging, you know? I don't know if this counts, but like occasionally I'll look up lyrics to songs and read them on my phone. Um, I don't know if I've ever read literature on my phone. I don't think so. I usually read a lot of forums or news, and the forums usually pertain to interests like sports and similar things. I read all kinds of things on my phone. I read my email. I read. Sometimes I read poems on my phone. Yes, I got a lot of uh, notes in the book in, in my phone, and I read those uh, Facebooks, emails, notice news. Uh, I read news articles, uh, stuff about healthcare industry. Gotcha. Um, I don't usually read like Facebook and stuff like that, but I like it. I, I actually read the news on my phone. I think that because it's not tactile and because it isn't only the piece of literature, it's not the same. Well, my phone, I've spent away from many days, but my I have two phones because I have a stupid phone and a smartphone. I never am away from my smartphone, though. I'm usually away from my dumb phone. I haven't done that for a while. Mm -hmm. um, usually... I just forget it. <laughs> I, last summer I went on a, on a backpacking trip. Mm -hmm. That's probably the only time I spent a day away from my phone. Mm -hmm. It's when I'm camping. 
I can't remember a time where I've intentionally left my phone away for an entire day. Probably in the last week or two. Um, I don't always like to be connected to my phone and sometimes I will let it die in order to not have to deal with the world of obligations inside of my telephone. A lot of times when I realize I've forgotten my phone, I feel kind of liberated. It's just, it's so easy when you're out with somebody and they go to the bathroom to take out your phone and start talking on it and when you don't have that option, it's, I don't know, it's sort of freeing. And I also get to feel kind of smug because I'm the kind of person who doesn't have to look at her phone every five minutes even though it's because I can't look at my phone every five minutes. Uh, so, well, I used to have a smartphone, but unfortunately it broke, and I can't restore it. Mm. And I'm starting to realize how much I really relied on my cell phone for everyday use. I have been sort of surprised that I get this sensation of excitement when I've left my phone behind, because it means that I, I get to remember what the good old days were like. I can't really find my way around places without mm -hmm. the Maps app. Um, I have to communicate with my fiance via Facebook chat so mm. that she can get on her smartphone and be able to talk and so mm -hmm. I really realized that I was pretty obsessed with my smartphone. The last time I spent maybe a month ago when I forgot to charge my phone. Sometimes like if I'm driving somewhere and I don't have it I get concerned like if I like run into car trouble or lock my keys in my car or something that I'm not going to be able to contact someone to help me out. I never forget my phone at home actually. So I think I would feel um, a bit of anxiety, and I think it would also be wonderful at the same time. <laughs> not, not to be reachable. Personally, I hate my cell phone, and um, um, I, I tried to weasel out of uh, using one when we moved back here in the States. When, when we lived in Europe, it seemed like more of a necessity. It probably more so than I would like to admit. I feel like I've lost something very important and like I won't be able to get through the day <laughs> as well as I could, which is total rubbish, but I still feel that way. It makes me very nervous to forget my cell phone. Um, I haven't. No, but I'm sure that they do. But I have not directly witnessed it in a way that I was sure that was what was going on. I've seen people pass their phone from person to person. I haven't. I know that they text in my class. Um, I know that they surf the web in my class. And they're horrible at, uh, at hiding it. <laughs> no, not to cheat. That I know of. I've seen them use it in class. I don't know if they've used cell phones to cheat in the sense that there's a test or something and they look up answers, but more to cheat out of being there. I don't know if I've actually seen it happen, but I know that it probably does happen. I don't mind if they use it before I start lecturing or whatever, but if um, once I start my lecture, if I see that they got a smartphone out, I always tell them to turn it off. So I don't, I don't deal with cell phones well in class. I'm kind of old-fashioned that way. <laughs> I feel like that's a trick question. <laughs> um, I've used it for texting and for browsing online. To text? Mostly just to check. If I've gotten, if I've received a text message. Occasionally, um, I will confirm some sort of statistic or fact or word that we're arguing about. I record my uh, every lecture with my phone. And then if there's something that I want to take a picture of, like in a slide that I need to write down really quickly, I'll use it to take pictures too. Occasionally, sometimes the teacher will ask to have anyone look up something? I do use my phone during the, the film noir screenings, but I mean not during class. Especially when teachers assign, as they do now, will assign PDFs or readings on Blackboard, um, a lot of people will refer to their phones and actually like read quotes from the reading while we're discussing. Um, it was generally just a big lecture, so um, the professor would be <laughs> just talking and kind of distracted and it was easy to just like look at my phone in my lap. The professor, you know, gives lectures, drags on, you stop paying attention, pull your phone and start texting. <laughs> no. No. Totally. Uh... Definition of cyborg? I don't think so. Not technically. 
Technically, yeah. <laughs> I mean, a little bit, right? I guess you have a cell phone. I guess when I was a kid, when I was like a teenager, you would call from your friend's house and say, I'm at my friend's house, and they could tell from the caller ID, like your parents could tell from the caller ID. With your cell phone, you could call, I'd say, I'm at my friend's house, but you could really be at the Dairy Queen or something. I don't see how it would be easier to lie. I don't feel like I use it that way, and I don't think the people in my life use it that way, but... Oh yeah, it takes away the guilt factor completely. You don't have any inhibitions, you can lie your your cheeks off. It's like, why would illegally downloading a song on the internet be any easier than just stealing a CD from the store? They're both stealing, but one, you know, it's just the internet really makes things feel a little guiltless. I don't think so, I can lie just as easily with my own phone through text. Well, I read a statistic somewhere, I think it was in, in the Atlantic, that 30% of the people that you see on the street either talking or texting on their cell phone or actually talking or texting to nobody, they're pretending to talk or text. So in that sense, I think 30% of the people must be lying. Yes. Uh, yes, I have. Yes. It's freaky. Um, probably more control, considering that most people are online now. I guess you could say less control and that you're always available, theoretically. You're able to stay in contact with people on a more regular basis, I would say. A bit of both. Um, I think it, there's more control because it's easier to coordinate um, outside of my home. Uh, so if I want to get together with friends, I can text them or I can check my email. I would say both. I think in some ways more control because I can check emails and look up things anytime and I have it with me. Then again, also kind of kills your social life because you're more focused on a little mechanical device than actual people. I think actual people is more better than a little Phone. But I think there's so much you can do on the phone that you miss interaction with people. Um, more. Um, <clears throat> I just never thought of it as a, this is something that is, helps me get to a certain class. It's just a tool to help me organize my life. Not everyone can is able to get a smartphone. And having that kind of technology at your fingertips can definitely separate you from other people. I think that's one of the reasons why I put off getting one for so long. Because I felt like there was, there were better uses for that money. I would say more in some ways because it makes me, like when I broke my last smartphone for example, um, I was very stressed because I wasn't going to have money to buy a new one, and once you have one, you can't really go back. It was paying several hundred dollars for something that, that was replacing things I already had. So yeah, definitely more. I'm really more conscious of it. Less. Less aware. And even just being aware of like my surroundings, you know? Like, you just get lost in it. As almost everyone from every class like in most of our society has them now. Um, for example, like I'm from a super poor family, but I think that smartphones allow you to kind of pass. You know, everybody, well, okay, not everybody, a lot of people have a cell phone, but it was like making that decision to go to the higher level of bill, like have the more expensive bill, made me aware of whether or not I was in the social class that could afford that. All the time. All the time. I feel guilty as a member of a social group, as a member of a community. Um, no. <laughs> I imagine if I used it more often, I might, like if I was calling overseas or long distance and really didn't have the money or something. Yes. I feel that I depend on it too much. Partly for entertainment and when I can't fall asleep at night.
Uh, I feel guilty personally. I sometimes I feel guilty using, I, I feel guilty when I wake up in the morning because the first thing I do is reach for my cell phone and I literally my eyes have not begun to focus yet so I sort of have to like use my phone like this but I still grab it first. So now when I wake up the first thing that I feel is guilty. I feel guilty in the sense that it can sometimes remind me of how addicted I can be to the act of checking for things. I feel guilty sometimes when I use my phone because I'm hurting my thumb. Because if I have food on my fingers or something, it's like, oh, this is terrible for this beautiful computer that you're supposed to treat like a newborn infant, you know? That's an interesting question, though, because it makes me think some people must feel guilty about using their cell phone, but I don't. I'm, I'm racked with guilt because of this stupid cell phone all the time. It helps me to remember uh, certain appointments that I have during the day. I don't really get into like programming my whole phone um, to, to like give me alarms and alerts and help me. As a matter of fact, I really don't like helpful appliances. It helps me remember to get up because I set an alarm on my smartphone. That's how I wake up in the morning. Um, helps me remember details about any uh, anything really as long as I have access to Wikipedia from it. It's interesting that you should say that because it didn't help me remember something that I really wanted to do on Saturday night. Birthdays? It actually didn't help me because I didn't tell it to help me. It doesn't help me to remember all that much to be totally honest because um, I don't use the calendar on it very actively. I think it helps me forget and kind of release information that I would have otherwise kept in my brain, right? Like, none of us remember phone numbers anymore. I don't know my husband's phone number because um, I never have to know it until I'm locked out of the house without my phone. I mean, someday I'll need to know it. Smartphones take a lot of the, the, the weight off of the importance of remembering like, details and facts um, because you can look them up just as easily with the push of a button. Oh, a lot. <laughs> um, I think that it's kind of lowering our potential for short-term memory in that way. So what does it help you forget? Just about everything. Now, I wouldn't say it's made me smarter, but it's actually helps me a lot um, professionally. Oh, gosh. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Um, it makes me seem like I really know what I'm talking about when I'm giving directions, even though that's not the case. It's a tool that can be utilized to maybe present yourself in a smarter way. You can prepare easier, but I think all that stuff is available in other ways. I think so. I think being on Twitter actually is really um, important in the sense of whatever, well, I don't think necessarily Twitter is important as much as finding news updates for yourself. You know, I can get on, get on the internet, you know, that much faster, or get on email and remind myself of something, or my calendar and remind myself of something. So, you know, I know that I'm not necessarily any smarter, but the people around me might think that I am because I have the information. <laughs> um... Probably. I mean, I use it to look things up on Google, which I guess technically means Google is making me smarter, but whatever. God no, dumber if anything. I would like to say yes, but probably not. <laughs> because it does all the research for me with Google, and <laughs> social skills are not as good because I text everybody. It depends on what you define as smart, you know? It's what is, is, it, what your definition of is, is. No. Um, no. You kind of, I don't know, you, your brain's a muscle. We don't remember phone numbers anymore. Um, I've, I'm trying to kick myself with that habit of having to relax and not, oh, I can, it's on my smartphone. Yeah, I don't, I don't think my actual intelligence changes due to having a smartphone. I think just my, my access to a database of knowledge changes. So think of it as... So is a person with an encyclopedia any smarter because they have an encyclopedia? It's the same, it'd be this, it'd just be an extension of the same argument for computers making people smarter, which is mm -hmm. they are if you use them the right way. <laughs> no, it makes me dumber. 
No. <laughs> I, I think it's... It's made me... Uh, more distracted. You, you don't have to know anything or read anything. You just look it up. Look some random fact up. And, and it's all, all the stuff that they look up online now is just random crap. I think that it has helped me to appear smarter to my friends because whereas they used to think that I was just making things up, now they can verify my claims on their phones. So it makes me appear smarter um, because I am right most of the time. I think, I think yes, and just like learning how to use it, I feel like it creates new wrinkles in the brain whenever you have one of those challenges. Uh, I guess I would understand smarter as either having more knowledge or having more critical skills, and it gives me a way to pass on or quickly acquire knowledge, but I don't necessarily retain that knowledge. Um, and I don't think it's made me smarter in terms of sort of critical reading skills or analytical skills, no.